Thank you, Naz. So, writer and broadcaster Emma Wolf and the columnist for The Times, Hugo Rifkin, are with us for a final look through this morning's papers. Uh, Hugo, can we kick off with The Telegraph, page 12? Historic day as Sweden is joining NATO Alliance. Such a useful organisation, NATO, isn't it? It's, this is a big deal. You know, Sweden has been a, a neutral country, well, I mean, forever. Neutral, ne neutral through two world wars. Um, uh, you know, um, didn't, it didn't, join the, 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 didn't join the fight against the Nazis, remained neutral. Uh, is alarmed enough about Russian, uh, the Russian threat, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, that, that Sweden is now joining NATO. This is a disaster for Russia, because uh, as far as Putin is concerned, the rationale for the Ukrainian war was his fear about NATO expanding to Russian mm. borders. And yet the result of him invading Ukraine has been that now Sweden, along with almost everybody else, Wants to wants to join NATO. Yes, he's engineered the absolute opposite. The absolute opposite of what he of what mm. he wa what he wanted. It's it's so it's a it's a it's a sort of it's a good day for NATO. It's a good day for Sweden. It's quite an alarming day in sort of geopol geopolitical terms generally because it does show that you really do have these two blocks running against each other. Mm. Emma, is, is is NATO toothless? <sighs> Could... Maybe it's cynicism, but I, I I don't see it bringing as much to the table as we were led to believe that it should done or has done in the past. Well, I, I was just thinking that as Hugo was, was talking there. If only we could do something, if only NATO could do something to stand up to Putin and really counter this threat, because it is the biggest threat to global security at the moment, the Putin, you know, P Putin's Russia. And he's about to hand himself another six years in power, isn't he? He's about to rubber stamp that. Mm -hmm. um, and I just feel frustrated that NATO can't stand up and do something. If I can say something, this is NATO standing up and doing something. U Ukraine is not a member of NATO. Uh, it, when Sweden is a member of NATO, what that means is if, 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 uh, if Russia invades Sweden, mm -hmm. uh, NATO goes to war. Right? This is what NATO is. NATO is an agreement that countries will defend each other I, I'm in terms talking about of war. The, I'm talking yeah. about the fact that we've just passed the second anniversary of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and NATO is doing nothing. I, I'm not talking Ukraine, about Sweden. You, Ukraine, well, Ukraine is not in NATO, but NATO is doing plenty. I mean, the, Ukraine... Do you think it's a toothless organisation? I mean, it's, it's an organisation that only exists as a, as a composite of its members. You know, some members of NATO are doing a huge amount. Britain's doing a lot, America's doing a lot, Germany's doing quite a lot. Uh, Who isn't? Because Trump's got that bee in his bonnet, hasn't he? Uh, well, Spain and Portugal, but Russia's quite far away for both of them, so I doubt they care all that much. Look, a lot of countries should be giving more. But actually, when Trump started banging on about this 10 years ago, most countries in NATO didn't give enough money. Now most countries do give enough money. Mm. Uh, so um, I think we, um, you know, I, I, I mean, NATO, it's, it's a vital organisation. It could be tougher, but it's doing its job. Okay. This story actually plays into the next one because all these countries are trying to make up their decisions. How much money do they spend domestically? How much do they spend on defence, etc.? Um, and the argument that often comes up when we talk about things like defence spending is what about the cost of living at home? Emma, let's look. Uh, in the star, um, most workers will not have earned enough to cover their annual household bills until, well, about this time of the year, mm -hmm. the 29th of February. So by Thursday, the, the worker on the average salary, which is just over 28,000, will have earned enough in this year to cover, well, <laughs> council tax and energy bills, so they're basic bills, but it won't, they won't have earned enough. They've earned around 4,500. They won't have earned enough to cover mortgage or rent costs or any of that. It's, it's like that second day in January when people say most fat cats have now earned more <laughs> by January the 3rd or whatever it is. It's early January than the average worker earns all year. So it's a really depressing one because basically all year the average worker's been working mm. thus far. Th these comparisons make for headlines, but the bigger picture that we're talking about here, Hugo, is that you know people's pay packets aren't sufficient for the cost of living. No, they're not. But I mean, it is only it's only the end of February. Mm. You know, I'm not sure I necessarily expect to have earned enough to stay alive all year by the end of the end of February. Um, so um, I mean, it doesn't include sort of tax, obviously. But uh, no, or the, housing costs, no mortgage, mortgage or, or rent. Quite. Yeah. But you can um, say bills done. Yeah, but I well, think council tax and eaten. energy. You haven't eaten for eight you haven't weeks. Eaten. But I mean, no. council tax and energy yeah. done. But, but yeah, but no, no <laughs> offense to any of you people. But if I'd earned that much by February the 29th, I wouldn't be sitting here. I'd be off. I'd be off on holiday for now. <laughs> so um, you know, look, wow. you, you're, you're quite right. People, people are people's uh, standards of living are not improving. People's pay packets mm. are not improving. Yeah. Costs are rising, and this is this is one way of illustrating that. I think this next one's really really interesting. Um, in the Times, page 10, Hugo, the Technology Secretary Michelle Donnellan has revealed that she would not buy her son a smartphone. Uh, once he's reached the age of nine, despite Ofcom reporting that half of nine-year-olds already have one. I think Rosie and I were talking about this in the break. We're sort of kids at secondary school age. I think mine yep. got one at 11. Same. Mine, mine too. My, yep. my, kids, my kids are at secondary school. They also got them at 11. They got them when they began to go by themselves to secondary school. And frankly, I wanted to see where they were. Um, uh, but um, I think, yeah, I think good on it. I mean, nine is too young. I'm quite shocked 
Yeah. Half of nine-year-olds have smartphones. We've got a shaking head. We've got uh, a shaking head. I think, I think it was... Um, something that complicates this is that we went through lockdown. And I think the, te- the experience of technology for a lot of kids and tweens changed quite a lot during mm. that period because otherwise they would have been isolated. We were relying on technology. Kids had to do it yeah. just at a slightly younger yeah. age as well. Yeah. Um, education and social. No, I have a campaign to ban smartphones for the under 16s and every time I talk about it, everybody laughs at me and says it's hilarious. Ha, ha, ha. My three-year-old does not look at screens, doesn't look at all of that stuff. I know... He doesn't the ch- watch the television. No, we don't own a television. I've never lived with a television ever in my life. I was brought up without television. <clears throat> I think the internet is a grubby, dangerous... You know you're on murky... television. Yes, I know I'm on television. I know I work on television. It doesn't mean I have to watch it. Um, I think the internet... I I can't see any positives for children. Yes, there's a role of education, and yes, schools are increasingly using them to do, like, you know, maths and whatever. But I have been touring primary schools. I don't want a primary school that puts my child in front of a screen all day. I don't want that kind of learning. I want to stick with books and singing and playing and interaction and talking. And I'm going to resist my three-year-old. I'm going to resist as long as I can. Probably I won't get to the... uh, Probably I won't get to... 16 without, you know, he'll be laughed at if he doesn't have a phone. But I just don't think, look at our children, look at our young people. Depressed, anxious, lonely, socially isolated. The whole thing is just so sad. And I think back to our childhoods. We were out, we were reading, we were playing, we were talking. I think it's a real shame. It's really interesting. I I, I really love your honesty there. There was a Oliver's Fall. Yeah. And um, there comes a point every day, which is called the witching hour, at about five o'clock, where whatever you've done, and wh- whether he's played all day or been to school, he's a pain in the backside. Mm. I know. And I absolutely put my hands on my head, uh, my heart, as, as Vic would say. pop him in front of a screen, I know. And he has his iPad. And, and, and you're right, we went out. And, and an We didn't come in until she leant out the front door and shouted tea. Tea time, yeah, at but six we, o'clock. But we in. also started, we started smoking young, we drank young, we were a generation that was far to more likely to get pregnant. speak for yourself, Rifkin. What an upbringing. Well, no, I did. Absolutely. Yeah, you yeah. know, I mean, and so there's, there's ups and downs here. I think, I think 16 is... 16 is difficult because, yeah. firstly, by the time they're 13, 14, 15, there's a lot going on. But also, what happens at 16? Do they get hit by a truck by the internet at the age of 16? Because I'm not sure that's super either. No. I think you also have a point about... I mean, it still shocks me. My kids get emails about homework and emails about this and emails about... Mm. I think you might find when they get to of secondary course, school I know. in another eight years... I if they're not... Actually, I, think 11, I, think, I think Rosie said it really well in the break. I think 11 is probably the benchmark, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, and, and, and also I think the government need to work with developers to develop phones that kids can use so you can track them. Well, so they can t- they need to have it's, access it's to easy, things like... It's easy to do more buses people just where, need to well and trains. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want but to well, track then, my children. I would never do that. No, but, but for safety, maybe a brick phone. But so it might that be that you're on sort of like find my friends and you've got your children on your find my friends so you know where they are. I mean, in they an emergency, they need way. to know. You need to know. They need to be able My to call mummy. My kids have a phone because if there's an emergency, they know they can ring me. That's exactly. me being completely exactly. honest. Exactly. Um, should we talk about uh, if someone had time on their hands and liked cooler climates? Yeah. Emma, in the Guardian, um, there's a charity that's offering an ideal job if you don't mind noisy penguins. Yes. Yeah, so this is. Uh, Ideal this is for the Falkland Islands. It's in um, at the Antarctica. It's on Goudier Island. Yeah. It's about the size of a football pitch. Oh my gosh, that's what well, the island is. Yeah. So I think it's more if you don't mind claustrophobia and the cold. Well, there's more than that. Near constant daylight. Now, that is actually incredibly wearing. It's like being jet-lagged the whole time. Near constant daylight, sub-zero temperatures, no flushing toilet or running water. And worse for me, everybody shares one tiny bunk room. So anyway, you can, the, 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 the charity, a uh, heritage charity is, is advertising these vacancies. And it's at the bottom of the world. It's only 9,000 miles from the UK. Um, but can you imagine living and working out there? And the penguins apparently are incredibly noisy mm. and quite smelly as well, aren't they? Flip side, rent in London is quite expensive. Yeah, <laughs> you just said some people. What? You, know what you just said there, flip, flip side. Flip side. <laughs> really side. good, you guys. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there he is, He's the goose eating flip side. He's here all week. More from him later on. Thank you both. Thank you very um, much thank indeed. You. Thank you. Thank you as ever.